Howdy, I'm Wendell. This is level one, and your Patreon dollars are at work again on Mad Science. Probably, well, it's not, I, I'm gonna just go ahead and say it's a world first. Thunderbolt on Threadripper, here, yes, working. It's completely fine. Okay, well, completely fine. There's, there's some asterisks there. But Thunderbolt on Threadripper is working, but I can't give it to you, but I got it working. And I'll tell you how I got it working so you can get it working too. And I'll tell you why I can't give it to you because copyright law in the United States. But it shows that we've got good working hardware. So Threadripper, Thunderbolt, what gives? Some background. Thunderbolt, so I've got this Dell XPS, you know, this is a Cabby Lake G. Got four Thunderbolt ports, basically. I mean, you know, it's Thunderbolt by four on at least some of them. Got the Gigabyte Gaming Box. This has got a GTX 1070 in it. Increasingly, this is a really popular setup. You can get a laptop that, you know, has only an iGPU or a relatively weak integrated GPU. It's like, ah, oh, you know, I really want to play some higher end games. You can get a, a dock like this with a real graphics card in it connected via Thunderbolt 3. It's a 40 gigabit per second connection or PCI Express by four, if you want to think of it that way. Exclusively has been the realm and domain of Intel forever. But Intel promised to open up and release the specs for Thunderbolt 3, and they, they pretty much have. But Intel still wants to certify Thunderbolt 3 devices. So I got it working. And it took reverse engineering and poking at things and doing a lot of unholy stuff. This is not sanctioned by anybody. I did not have help from anybody. So the hardware that we're running on is the Gigabyte Designator X399 and our CPU is a Ryzen Threadripper 1950X. The card that we're using is the Gigabyte Alpine Ridge PCI Express add-in card. Now normally this add-in card is designed for Intel systems. And there's an interesting situation between Intel and Threadripper. Threadripper's got tons of PCI Express lanes coming out the CPU. You may have heard that, you may be, you haven't heard that. It's, it's technically 64 PCI Express lanes. Four of the 64 go to the uh, chipset, which is provided by Asmedia, but it's called the X399 chipset. It's an AMD chipset, or AMD just needs to buy Asmedia. On the Intel platforms, you know, you might have 16 or 24 or 40, 32, 40, whatever. PCI Express lanes, depending on whether we're talking about, you know, KB Lake or Coffee Lake, all the way up to X299. But all of the Thunderbolt connections on all of those, including this laptop, all of the Thunderbolt connections go through the chipset. None of those lanes are connected directly to the CPU. And the reason for that is hot plug is really hard. It's not impossible. Actually, Linus was showing off his uh, PCI Express hot plug thing when I was visiting Linus in Canada. And so on servers now, finally, bleeding edge, software that you would never actually want to run in the data center because it's so bloody unstable, you can do PCI Express hot plug for, for NVMe. It's really around servers. It's those NVMe drives that they really want to be able to hot plug. And hot plug on Threadripper, I haven't got it to work exactly perfectly correctly yet, but I think I'm ahead of the curve there. I think we might be, you know, sort of one of the first people to have that, maybe. I think Dell might have figured out NVMe hot plug, but I'm not sure if they figured out NVMe hot plug on Linux. But we've got the PCI Express reset patch, which is related to our work with VFIO. So like with a Vega graphics card, when you wanna pass through a Vega graphics card or any graphics card on Threadripper, uh, the hardware doesn't reset the PCI Express bus correctly. So Jeff at Host Vision and I worked really hard on a patch uh, and while figuring it out and he did the patch for the Linux kernel to fix the PCI Express bus reset problems, which it turns out was really handy here in getting Thunderbolt to work on a 1950X on Threadripper. So the PCI Express layout between Intel and Threadripper is different because that Alpine Ridge Thunderbolt bridge is connected directly to the CPU on Threadripper, whereas with Intel, it goes through the chipset. And going through the chipset gives you a little bit more control and a little bit of a, an oops, oh crap buffer when you're doing things like hot plug. So hot plug can be really squirrely. With the PCI Express reset, I am able to sometimes reset it, but really it's around PCI Express storage more than graphics. And 
you know, I, admittedly, it doesn't make a lot of sense running your graphics card in a Thunderbolt enclosure on Threadripper, but Thunderbolt, maybe for storage, PC, external PCI Express storage, that could be pretty cool. And that actually works really well. So how do you do it? How does it work? What do you have to do? Well, when you put in the Thunderbolt card, you get an extra PCI Express bridge that shows up in your system immediately, but it lacks any kind of initialization code. You see, we've got a, a PCI Express bridge on the AMD side, and that's gonna bridge to the Thunderbolt bus interface on the Intel Alpine Ridge side. But there's a little bit of software that's missing to make the two of them talk to one another. Now, obviously I don't write that software, or I can't, I'm not gonna write that software, but that software exists on Intel systems. And it turns out that that actually lives in the UEFI. So there's a UEFI module that you can extract from Intel systems if you know what you're doing and inject that into a Threadripper system. Now, that also still didn't quite 100% work and that's because the Thunderbolt card and the related accoutrement also requires firmware. So you're gonna have to set up the card in another system, make sure that the firmware is all initialized and uh, set that up and then take that and set it up in your Threadripper system. And then you can have Thunderbolt on Threadripper. Now I'm being a little bit ambiguous and a little bit obtuse because I think that binary blob that's in the UEFI is probably copyright Intel, but it shows that the hardware, the hardware that we have in the Gigabyte Designator X399 and the Alpine Ridge controller, it works, it's there. There is nothing wrong with it. There's no fatal design flaw. So I would guess that the only thing that we're waiting on is Intel to certify Thunderbolt for Threadripper or the AMD platform in general. Now, admittedly, the hot plug thing may be the holdup, but hey, we've got the Linux kernel patch for that. So I think at least as far as storage goes, we're in pretty good shape. But yeah, level one, you heard it here first. Threadripper, Thunderbolt, we did it. <laughs> Go team. Gosh, I would love to be able to do more stuff like this. It's like, I don't know, okay, now that it's done, who do I tell? Who is excited by Thunderbolt on Threadripper? What problem does that solve? uh for people because i'm excited by that i mean it's cool because it's a thing i mean i'm sure that gigabytes engineers figured this out too but to figure it out independently that's pretty cool so yeah again no inside help no inside anything it's just thunderbolt on threadripper by copy pasting some binaries from an intel system with the thunder with the same thunderbolt controller and getting it up and running on Threadripper and the connection, everything's good to go. Thunderbolt is, like if you've never seen an interface card like this, in addition to the PCI Express bus interface, you also have to have a system management bus interface. And that's for enabling and disabling the ports and doing all sorts of control like that. So you've really got to make sure that you dot your I's across your T's in terms of like looking for hardware support. Now would this work on AMD Ryzen? I don't know. Do you guys know of any motherboards that are for AMD Ryzen that actually have a Thunderbolt header? I've been looking for one, but I haven't really noticed one. I haven't really been looking until now, until I got this working, but maybe that's a thing that we should pay more attention to or look for. Now, the other interesting thing is that uh, Thunderbolt is gonna bottleneck less on the AMD platform. So I don't know, I don't know what Intel's thinking. Like, so let's say hypothetically you're running the Samsung 970 Pro, that's a 3.5 gigabyte per second NVMe drive. If you're running that as well as external storage, those, both of those devices are traveling through the PCI Express by four DMI lanes to the CPU. So both of those things share a single PCI Express by four connection. On Threadripper, that's not the case. You have a dedicated PCI Express by four connection to the CPU for the first NVMe, and you have a PCI Express by four dedicated connection to the CPU for this Alpine Ridge add-in card. So if you're doing like a RAID zero, I don't, don't do this, because this just seems crazy. But if you did a RAID zero NVMe with the external drive and an internal drive, you could totally get six, seven gigabytes per second. You will not, that will bottleneck on Intel because all of the Thunderbolt ports on the entire platform, laptop, desktop alike, all of those Thunderbolt ports go through the DMI interface. How insane is that? So yeah, if you want to give us some kudos, there's a link to our Patreon in the, uh, in the description, or you can just come say hi in the forum or let us know, you know, what sort of industries that, uh, we can disrupt. Hopefully somebody in one of those countries that is not quite as restrictive on copyright law that probably wouldn't get a cease and desist letter can 
dot the I's and cross the T's with, with what we laid out, because honestly, it's not that hard to get Thunderbolt working on Threadripper. Maybe we can't call it Thunderbolt. Maybe we should call it like, I don't know, Uberbolt or Thunder Chicken or something. I don't know. I don't have any good names, good alternative names for Thunderbolt. Maybe you can post a good name for alternative implementation of Thunderbolt so we don't call it Thunderbolt, it's just Thunderbolt compatible. And it's mostly compatible except for that whole hot plug thing, which, you know, honestly, hot plug, even Thunderbolt on Windows hot plug is kind of sketchy. So have we really lost anything? I don't know, I'm starting to ramble, so that's my cue to go. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out. You can find me in the level one forums. See ya.